What's good, Ken folk? It's your boy, Screwface Capone in the house. And welcome to another episode of Will Talks About Game. This is episode 29. Can you believe that? I know it's been a while since the last one of these I did. And I know I keep saying I'm going to do these more frequently. So, yeah. But at least this time it's uh, one month between episodes instead of two months, right? Hey, I'm getting better at this. Um, eventually I might do these on a weekly basis again. But in all seriousness, though, um, whether you're watching on, if whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to this on a podcast, I thank you for joining me for however long this ends up being. Usually when I record these, I don't know how long they end up being until I put them together. So obviously you're listening to this right now, so you see the timestamp. So sometimes these things might be as um, short as maybe a half hour. Other times they might be over an hour. I think the longest one I did so far was the um, episode 20 where I talked about Abandon. So that ended up being like an hour and eight minutes. But um, this one, it's Memorial Day weekend. So hopefully I got this out in time to give you guys something to listen to while you're grilling your burgers, your dogs and all that. And of course, remember our troops. Um, remember the sacrifice that they made. Um, all gave some, some gave all. So that's what this holiday is about. Anyway, um, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast, and again, thank you for joining me. And if you're watching on YouTube, then the gaming footage that you're seeing, it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. So you can actually have this playing in the background. If you're doing anything like uh, studying, maybe you work from home, maybe you're playing with the kids or you're um, doing some housework, doing some cleaning, or just chilling out. You just have this playing in the background. And wherever you're at, then please consider subscribing. If you're listening to the podcast and you're not already subscribed, then please add me to your RSS feed. And if you're listening and you're watching on YouTube, then please hit that big red subscribe button and click the bell icon. That way you'll be the first to know whenever I, whenever I put out new content. I like to cover retro stuff. I like to cover indie games. I like to do game reviews, previews. Um, all sorts of game-related stuff. So if that's your thing, then this is definitely where you're going to want to be at. And if you're listening to the podcast and you're not already subscribed, then please consider doing so. And again, if you're watching on YouTube and you're not subscribed to the podcast there, then please consider adding this to your RSS. I'm on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, just about anywhere you, just about anywhere you go to listen to podcasts, then I'm probably there. So anyway, on this edition of Will Talks About Games, I'm going to talk about some observations that I made about the new Mortal Kombat trailer. Also, I got some news about the Amico, the Intellivision Amico. So we're going to go through that. Well, technically it's an email that I got, but I'm going to go through that and I'm going to try to break down what that's going to mean. Also, I'm going to break down some of the bigger announcements from the um, PlayStation Showcase from this past week. And of course, we've got the Xbox Showcase in two weeks. On June 11th, so I'm going to make some predictions about that because there's been a lot of fake leaks. I kind of want to go through like some of what I see and some of what I think is going to be there. And also there's some random news items I'll be touching upon. So strap yourselves in and let's get things started. All right, first of all, I want to start off by talking about Mortal Kombat 1. That's not the original Mortal Kombat, mind you. I'm talking about Mortal Kombat 1. The upcoming entry in it, which is technically Mortal Kombat 12. So, it's an all-new reboot of the series, and Neverrealm is going to promise us um, all-new versions of the characters. So, if you look at the trailer, then... Now, I'm not going to say too much... Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, because if you check my YouTube channel, I did a trailer takedown, which I already go through the trailer, and... I give my thoughts on it, but there's a few things that I just wanted to um, pick up on. That I just wanted to um, speak up on now that I had a chance to look at it again. So one of the things I noticed, first of all, is that Melina was one of the first characters that they revealed for the game. I kind of thought that was funny because I remember with Mortal Kombat 11, so many people were angry that she wasn't in the game. And people were kept insisting that they add her to the game. And I know... Um, never remember actually trolling players with it. Like when they had that friendship from Katana, and that's when Melina came out. 
And they ended up eventually adding her into like one of the last combat packs for it. Or one of the last character packs or whatever. So this time around, hopefully they'll be happy because like she's the first one that's been in. Now, secondly, I, um, I think I have a theory about the game's plot. So if you played Mortal Kombat Aftermath, and basically if you picked like Liu Kang in the final battle, then he basically goes back in time to the original Kung Lao to start this new era of his. So, because it's like a new timeline, you're going to see a lot of different characters with different origin stories. Like, you saw in the trailer that Sub-Zero and Scorpion are still going to have their rivalry. But I think they might have, like, like a different reason for it sometime. Um, and I think Katana and Melina are going to be, like, different characters as well. I think the most interesting part is, like, when Shang Tsung came through. Now, I think... Now, I don't want to say, like, he's going to be the ultimate hero because they're adding him in as a pre-order bonus. So I don't know how that would work in far in terms of the game storyline, but I think in this one, um, Liu Kang's going to become kind of a villain. Like he's going to be like fighting to preserve this um, peace in this version in this um, golden new era while er while all these fights are breaking out. And like if you looked at like when they revealed Shang Tsung as a pre order bonus, he looked a lot younger. Like not just like his Mortal Kombat 11 model, or um, like even like the uh, Mortal Kombat 9 model with the younger version from Mortal Kombat 2. Like he looked, like he looked even younger than that. So like Shang Tsung might be playing more of a heroic role, or maybe at the very least an anti-villain. But I guess we'll see when that comes out this fall. So we got Street Fighter 6 coming out this week. We got Tekken 8 coming out sometime this year. And we got Mortal Kombat 1 coming out. So this is going to be a very good year if you like fighting games. I know I said that I know I know said that in the video. But if you're into fighting games, this is going to be a very good year. So anyway, let me know what you think. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, and I have my link tree in there. So you can reach out to me on social media. And if you're on YouTube, then feel free to drop a comment. But moving on. All right, now let's move on to the Intellivision Amico. So for those unfamiliar, gaming composer Tommy Tallarico bought out the rights to the Intellivision name and the Intellivision IP, and they announced this upcoming console called the Intellivision Amico, which features wireless controls, a touchscreen, and is geared toward family-friendly gaming. Unfortunately, there's been so many delays and controversies and crowdfunding issues that, at best, people think that this is just vaporware, and at worst, People think that this is a scam. I kind of fall somewhere in between the two. If you want more of a breakdown about the Intellivision Amico, I actually covered this in episode 6 of Will Talks About Games. Also, if you want more of a further deep dive, then DJ Slope, the YouTuber DJ Slope, has a four hour long documentary about the Amico. It's very awesome, but it's, like I said, it's four hours long, so you're going to want to set aside some time for that. So if you so I'm gonna leave some links in the um, description and you can go check these out at your leisure. But anyway, I recently got an email from Intellivision Entertainment. More specifically, it's a letter from the CEO, Phil Adam. And this is the first update that I got from Intellivision since last August. So we're gonna go through this letter and I'm gonna give my thoughts as to what I'm observing from it. So this is the first time I've seen this letter. And I'm guessing for a lot of y'all, this is the first time you've heard of this letter, too. Quote, The last 18 months since becoming the CEO has been an extremely difficult time for the Intellivision business. A long list of disappointments from both inside and outside of the company have to be taken head on. During this time, we laid off a large portion of our staff, restructured our management team, and began the process of reevaluating every aspect of the business, which included the path that lay ahead for Intellivision. What we have distilled down from countless hours of self-assessment is that we are, or more accurately wish to be, in the business of creating a living room experience that brings people of various ages together in group play. It is the experience between people sitting in the same room that will be our primary measure of success. This, first and foremost, comes from offering great content. Unquote. So, 
basically this is the first two paragraphs. And what they're alluding to is like around the time he had took over as CEO, they had law they had um they had to close out another crowdfunding campaign. And of course Tommy Tallarico departs. And of course there have been delays and all that stuff. So of course, um when they say creating a living room experience, that's their whole mission with the Amico. So like bringing people together and sitting in the same room, the whole couch co-op feeling from back in the days. And you know, I can respect that. Unfor- like, um, unfortunately, things have been turned out the way they are, so it looks like they're go- um, this is, They're basically saying that they know they're effing up, so they're going to reevaluate what they're doing and try to examine going forward, and part of that is the need to create great content. So let's keep moving and go a little bit deeper. Quote, as an entertainment business, we realize that creating great content requires world-class partners and a focus on strategies where we can effectively achieve the necessary level of excellence to succeed. To this end, we will be announcing a string of new partnerships that will not only help bring fun and innovative content that captures the Amico experience, but also bolsters and celebrates our content's appeal by licensing our IP to development partners who have product pedigrees that are creatively aligned and best poised to bring something great to market, Two, leveraging our IP in ways that ensures delivery on Amico, but additionally expands our content to entirely new audiences the television would otherwise be unable to reach. And three, acquiring new IP that embodies Amico and fits our strategic focus. This will include licensing IP for other platforms where it makes sense to do so. Our commitment to delivering a an unique and innovative platform that brings people together has not wavered. What has changed is our philosophy on how to deliver that experience. The business environment is quite different from what it was in 2018 when the original Intellivision business plan was put together. We cannot solely be dependent on a traditional hardware console business model. The cost and time to scale a business is too great. We must be more creative in how we deploy our intended entertainment experience, not only by deli- not only delivering better experience for our customers, but also reducing the time and cost to scale the business. Unquote. All right. So basically, what I get. So obviously, their pl- their their business plan doesn't just stop with the Amico, and that's going to be become less and less a part of it. Well, I wouldn't say less and less. But obviously, they're looking into putting their content on other platforms. And if you're an Evercade owner, then they've actually released a compilation of Intellivision games for the Am- for the um for the Evercade devices. So we could also be seeing some of these games on platforms such as mobile, Steam, maybe even Xbox, maybe even PlayStation, or maybe even Nintendo Switch. Because you um you've probably seen the videos of people playing Shark Shark. I know DJ Slopes had a uh, demo of it on his channel. Like, obviously not the Amico version, but that's something great that could fit on, like something like Nintendo Switch. So I can easily see them like um, becoming more of a third-party publisher or a third-party developer rather than a straight-up hardware console manufacturer. So what I'm looking at, so what I, what I'm hearing or what I'm reading is that like they're kind of stepping back from console development. But they want to like license that out so they can still work um, work with the brand. So you got this kind of like um, sunken cost fallacy going down. Like they already put out this money, but they want to do something useful with it because obviously the console isn't going to work. But as far as the console itself, we're going to find that out when we go to this next pair. Quote: We want to assure our fans that shipping a console remains part of our product strategy. The development and hands-on testing of our pilot units have been a successful step forward. As a testament of this progress, we are pleased to share with you this video, and by the way, I'll link to that in the comments if you want to watch it, of a father and son playing Shark Shark on one of the pilot units in their home. So obviously they're still committed to shipping that console, but I don't think it's going to be as grandiose as was promised. If anything, this might be reduced to something more of a plug-and-play 
where you might have like all the games on there pre-installed or something like that. Maybe not like that. Um, like because I know like they showed all like I know they mentioned like an online store and NFTs and all that. But with direction, but with this direction that they seem to be going in, I don't think that that's any longer going to be a case. Because um, they're already like looking into licensing out and different options for it, and I don't think having an online store, all that stuff, would be enough to sustain sustain that. And um, if you check uh, my podcast about it, hit hint, I mentioned that some of the developers were actually having issues with the development process of it, so that might further hamper of that. So I guess they're going to put. So again. I think it was, they're still going to try to put out that console, you know, because of sunken cost fallacy. Like, they already took money from fans. They've already advertised it. Um, they've already um, demonstrated it. They've already promoted it. So, they pretty much got to put something out there. But I don't think it's going to be this big, grandiose platform. Um, I could pro- like um, I think the best thing to do with the console is just make it into a plug-and-play device. So I just put like everything on there and then just ship it out like that so you had that on there. Cause not like um if you re- if you recall like they promised a lot of exclusive titles for the um platform. But a lot of the but a lot of the games that they announced, like the Evil Knievel game, the Sesame Street game, I think there was a Care Bears game, like these were games that were already released online or on mobile platforms. So I think at this point, as far as the console, you know, they're probably going to be looking into cutting their losses. Again, sunken cost fallacy. They already put this much energy into the development and the manufacturing. They might as well see it through to the finish line. So next we're going to go through the last few paragraphs and um, we'll see where I think they're going to be going next. As part of our expanded strategy, we also plan to bring the Amico experience to other hardware platforms, starting with mobile devices, under the name Amico Home. Amico Home will dramatically reduce the hardware footprint needed to enjoy Amico games and provide more developers the opportunity to explore the creative potential of in-room multiplayer games with our innovative physical and smartphone controllers. This broadening of the talent pool will bring new ideas in gaming that will shape the future of in television and our place in the market. We are excited for this future and what it means for bringing the Amco experience to the public. Those who supported in television early on helped set the foundation for all that we've been able to achieve and we are truly thankful to you all. In the coming weeks, those that have maintained a deposit will be able to sign in and verify their spot on the priority list, Amico Club list. The Amco Club list will be used as the primary mechanism to prioritize access to special products, early access to new games, and other unique offers. More details to follow. Again, we thank you for your patience and support as we chart a new course for Intellivision and establish our own unique position in the vast and vibrant video game industry. Bill Adams, CEO. Unquote. So it looks like they're going to like create this experience or this platform called Amico Home. So what I'm what I'm what this sounds like to me like this could be some kind of app, maybe a smartphone app, maybe a uh, smart TV app that will run these Amico games. And you'll still have the controllers or maybe your smartphone so I know like part of the plan with the original Amco device was to use your smartphone to as a spare controller. So if they're still going that route, then I think that would be a good um that'll be a good route for them to go to. And of course, as I stated, like they're looking to bring it to other hardware platforms, starting with mobile devices. So definitely mobile is gonna go, is gonna become a big part of the plan. And that's likely gonna become what this um, the original vision for the console was supposed to be. So maybe we won't see it exactly on Xbox or PS5 because of the way they got their um, system set up, but we could be seeing some television product of some sort, maybe a compilation. Now, of course, all this is just me being optimistic about the whole thing. 
Like, I my very first gaming console was the Intellivision, so I first learned about the Amico, and I was very excited about this. Of course, as all the delays came out, time and time went on, you know, I became disillusioned, and I accepted the fact that this was never going, well, this may never come out. And of course, that was fine. But again, this is me thinking. This is me thinking optimistically. Like he's saying all the right things, and he and like the, it looks like they took some time to reevaluate their approach, see their, where they wanted to take it, see what kind of resources they needed, and see what kind of funding that they're gonna need. And honestly, that's probably the best way to go about this. Because as I stated in the podcast, I did it over a year ago. Well, I don't completely think this is a scam. I do think that Tommy Tallarico was a bit in over his head. Like, um, composing, like, um, creating a game console is different from composing music for games. So, I want to be optimistic about this, and I kind of hope, like, this direction will work out for it. Because the Intellivision brand is iconic when it comes to gaming. It's very historic. And in the right hand, and, um, in the right hands, then it can re- um, it can really go a long way toward game preservation and reminding people about the legacy of the Intellivision, as well as why these classic games were so beloved and why this console was so beloved. Like this was before this was before the NES, mind you. And obviously, the thing the thing he wants to do going forward is doing right by the people who already spent money on. And I'm wondering, like, how many people are still, who are still supporting this thing, and, um, how many people, and what other, and if, let me say this, like, if you were a, if you, if you were in favor of the Amico, and you still believe that they're going to deliver you a console, well, hell, even if you didn't, what do you think about this announcement? Um, do you think this could work for them? Do you think this is just going to be another scam? What do you think? Again, let me know in the comments. Or of course my link of course for the podcast listeners, my link tree is in the social media, so feel free to reach out to me. I got Instagram, Twitter, wherever. So that's enough for that. Let's move on. Alright, now I want to talk about the recent PlayStation showcase. So as you know, E3's been canceled. So this is the season, that early summer season of E3. So, well not E3, um, all the big gaming companies are holding their own showcases. And this would have been E3. So Sony had theirs. There's going to be the Summer Games Fest on the 8th. And of course, the Microsoft Showcase on the 11th. Ubisoft's doing something. And I think EA's doing something. And I think there's going to be a Nintendo Direct. Right now, I want to go over the PlayStation Showcase from this past Thursday. I'm not going to go over everything. Just some of the big highlights. Now, as far as first-party games or those PlayStation 5 exclusives, this kind of felt underwhelming. And that's a bit of a surprise because the main selling point for the PlayStation 5 was exclusives. We basically saw a lot of third-party stuff. And a lot of this stuff, was pointed, as pointed out by Microsoft, is also coming to Xbox Series X. I know you saw that pretty hilarious-looking um, graphic. Now, it's all in good nature and fun. Um, I'm not really into the whole console war thing. I got all three major platforms. And um, I also got a high-end gaming PC, just in case, just so you know. So, again, I'm not going to go over all this stuff, just some of the bigger um, bullet points. So, as far as third-party stuff, there's some pretty big stuff. You got Phantom Blade Zero, which is a um, Souls-like game or an action RPG that's coming from... um, I forget the name of the company. But I think it's coming to both PlayStation 5 and PC. Um, Capcom showed off some gameplay footage for Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, that's that's all, that's pretty awesome. Um, the first Dragon's Dogma was a cult classic. It kind of felt like a Eastern developed RPG, but by way of the Western one. Um, or more accurately, an Eastern developed Japanese RPG, but with a Western inspired direction. Kind of like their version of Elder Scrolls Oblivion, or something like Gothic, or something like Risen. So, definitely looking forward to that. We also saw some Alan Wake 2 footage. Um, not only will we be playing as Alan Wake, but you'll also be playing as an FBI agent. 
you're going to be in Bright Falls investigating a series of murders. So they're definitely looking to go for more of a horror-inspired direction. Um, so it's going to be a bit more intense. And of course, you get to play as a black woman, so that's always cool. So yeah, Alan Wake, that's, com that's coming out this fall, so that's another title that I got my eye on. And of course, Konami announced a big Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. That's been rumored for like months, if not years. So it's been finally confirmed. So Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater, it looks to be like the original game and the original plot with the original dialogue, but with a new graphical update, with a new graphical upgrade. Like, I'm not sure how I feel about this, like, especially when you can still buy the original version of Metal Gear Solid 3. And also there is the fact that Kojima is involved, but I guess we'll see what it looks like when the game actually comes out and we see it in action. Of course, we already have the Dead Space remake and a Resident Evil 4 remake. Um, personally, I did. I don't feel that this game really needed a remake. Like, the original version isn't all that old, and we just put out an HD. Well, no, it's not. Like, because the HD version came out on 360 and PS3. And in addition to that, they're also going to be putting out re-releases of Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3. Now, I'm not sure if this was just coming to PlayStation. Or if it's coming to Xbox as well. But if you miss out on these games for the first time. Then um, you get the opportunity to play them again. Especially the original Metal Gear Solid. Um, and I think the Metal Gear Solid 3 is going to be the substance. That had the versions of Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 2 packed in. So they're actually getting 5 games. Now again I really didn't see this as necessary to be re-released. But maybe they might be doing some improvements from the original. HD re-releases. Re They're on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, so who knows. I think if there's one game that should be re-released, it's Metal Gear Solid 4, because that's still on PlayStation 3, and it's still only on PlayStation 3. And, of course, also we saw games like Immortals of Avernum, we saw some in Update 2 Destiny. Um, I forget what it's called, but I think it's like the I think it's called the final something. I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, there's a lot of third-party stuff. And also there's a lot of um, online multiplayer games that are coming. I, um, Sony's big thing is that they want to invest in the more live services. And three new games were going to be announced at this sh were announced at this show. As a matter of fact, the show started off with a new game called Fair Games. And that's S as a dollar sign. It's a um, competitive heist shooter from Haven Studios. And Haven Studios is that new game studio that was started by Jay Redman, who worked on the Assassin's Creed games, and she also worked on a single-player Star Wars game that was canceled, that was at EA. So my thing is, like, how... Now, the gameplay definitely looks cool. It's kind of like a more... like a more vibrant version of Payday. But I think Jade Redman mostly works with single player stuff. So how does that gonna so how is that gonna translate to a live service online multiplayer style game? Because of course we've seen cases of um, developers who don't normally do live services branch out into live services and those floppy. Most notably the recent Babylon's Fall from Square Enix and Platinum. All right, Firewalk, which is a, which was another studio that was recently acquired by Sony. They're putting they're working on a game called Concord, which is a multiplayer sci-fi shoot. And finally, we got Marathon from Bungie. So that's a remake of the classic shooter from the Macintosh that came out in the mid '90s. So it that was a single player game, but they're going to remake this as a player versus enemy extraction shooter. So kind of something like maybe Escape from Tarkov. Or, um, or what it is, Hunt Showdown. So, um, I'm not sure how I feel about this, because, um, if you ever played Marathon, then you'll know, like, how, like, um, you'll know, like, how that game felt different from other shooters. And this kind of feels like they're just taking the name and slapping it onto something. Now, interestingly, this is also coming to Xbox Series X. Now, that is because, of course, um, PlayStation, Sony did acquire Bungie, but at the acquisition, I believe Bungie did say that they were still going to be putting out content on Xbox, including Destiny, and of course, this Mirror. 
So I guess I signed up for the beta, so if I get chosen, I guess I'll see, then I guess I'll be able to get a better idea of how this is going to work. But I think, like, this is one of those things where you, they just take a classic name and just stick it on something for the cash and value. But it is good to see them branching out with a different idea. Can't really say new one, because this is Marathon, but it is what it is. We also saw a lot of VR games. Um, there's uh, Crossfire X. There's, um, there's a, not Crossfire X, but there's a Crossfire game coming to VR. There's a game called Synapse. And um, there's a new Five Nights at Freddy's game. And also there's going to be a, uh, Beat Saber's coming to the, to the um, PlayStation 5 VR 2. And there's going to be a um, clean music pack. So if you're a Freddie Mercury fan, then you're going to want to keep your eyes on it. Now, I don't know if most of these games are coming exclusively to the PlayStation 2 VR. I know that um, Beat Saber is obviously already available on the um, Vive headset and the um, Meta Quest 2. Um, but what about the Crossfire, the Synapse, and the rest, and the rest of those things? Um, if they're going to be coming to Meta Quest or they're just going to be exclusive to the PlayStation platform. Uh, but that's enough of that. Um, and the show closed out by showing some footage of Spider-Man 2. So we saw Craven the Hunter. We saw Miles Morales. Um, we even saw the black suit. So if you're familiar with Venom, then and you saw the footage, then you know that's going to look a lot different from a dozen of comics. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, Spider-Man was a pretty awesome game, the first one. And of course, the Miles Morales game. So I just can't wait to see this new game in action. And I know a lot of people are giving it slack because it reuses the same map, but that's a given because it takes place in the same city and it takes and um it takes place in the same setting basically. So how would it not? It basically comes down to how they choose to implement everything. And of course with the PS5 with this being exclusive to PS5, it's obviously gonna be be a big graphical blow up. Now, like I said before, it's kind of felt a bit underwhelming in terms of first-party stuff because there were quite a few things that was missing. Um, most notably, the Last of Us um, Factions, which is the multiplayer update for Last of Us 2. Um, I think the word is that they were de um, developing it separately from the um, Last of Us 1 remake. I can't quite remember. Um, also, we didn't see anything about the Silent Hill remake. That is going to be a time exclusive to the PS5. Um, they bought in Bloober, Konami bought in Bloober team to do the remake. And of course, we didn't see anything of Ghost of Tsushima 2. I, th um, I think that one, it's hard to say like how far they are development wise with it. Um, so it could be like they're still early on in development. And then there's the Night of, there is the Knights of the Old Republic remake that they announced a few years ago um, from Aspire, and there has been reports that the game might even be canceled, which is kind of trouble. So um, I guess we'll wait and see, and if something comes out, um, I'll probably let you guys know, maybe look into what happened and do another deep dive in a later episode. So yeah, that was the PlayStation um, Showcase. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. So there's one more thing from the PlayStation 5 Showcase I totally forgot about. I just finished recording the rest of the podcast at this point. I was just getting ready to put it together. I totally, and this like totally skipped my mind. I want to touch on it briefly. So you now see Project Q device. That was that big device which it, with an 8-inch screen and um, two halves of a dual-sense controller um, on each side of it. And what this does, it lets you play your PlayStation 5 games on this little portable system when you're away from your TV using your um, in-home Wi-Fi. And to me, like, it's not really a dedicated cloud gaming device, and it's not like a separate handheld console. Um, it's basically a prettier version of the remote play, which I really don't see the point for, because, like, it all, like um, you pretty much can do that now with the PlayStation 5 remote play and with your um, cell phone and a controller attached to it. Because I know a lot of people would rather see um, a new Vita system or a new PS Portable. I think Sony probably um, left that mark behind like years ago. And pretty much the PS Vita support is on live support. Um, but like, I think this device just doesn't seem like, doesn't seem very necessary. Because everything, because the thing that you can do with it, you can do with it, you can do with your cell phone right now. 
I guess like when it comes out and they announce the price point for it, then maybe it could have some use. Um, but as a another gaming platform, I just don't see the point of it. Matter of fact, you can even use the remote play with a um, Steam Deck, I'm told. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say about that. Switching gears, I want to talk about the upcoming Xbox Showcase. Now, of course, we saw that hilarious little graphic I mentioned earlier about Xbox talking about all the games that are coming to Xbox along with PlayStation. But I think this is going to be a make it or break it year for the system. I mean, for the platform. I know we say that every year, but I think this year, now, more than ever, they got to show and prove. Um, last year, we saw several games, several big name games late this year to the point where um, its biggest. 2022 exclusive was As Dusk Falls. And that's a pretty good game. And that was a pretty solid game. It's got a great story. But of course, that's not what people have in mind when they want console exclusive. Basically, they want the Xbox equivalent to Spider-Man, the Xbox equivalent to Horizon Zero Dawn, the Xbox, the, um, Xbox equivalent to um, Ghost of Tsushima, you know, that kind of stuff. And the thing is, you got games that were announced two, three, even four years ago that we haven't seen or heard anything about. So hopefully we'll get to see progress on some of those games at the upcoming showcase. Now these past few days I have seen several different leaks about 40, um, so there's several supposed leaks for the um, showcase and there's just a bunch of stuff that just couldn't possibly be true. So we're going to be getting a lot more for these next few days. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate YouTube video to really break down these leaks and talk about like how likely each one is to happen. So I would do it on, on the podcast, but um, I kind of need a visual aid for this one. So subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll know when I write a drop. It'll be sometime this coming week, though. But right now I want to talk about some things that I think that we'll definitely see and I think that we'll, pro that we'll be seeing. So, we're definitely going to be seeing Starfield. In fact, they're going to be having its own separate feature after the Xbox Showcase. Also, Forza Motorsport will be featured. The developers just not announced that on Twitter a few days ago. They're going to hold a... Uh, they're going to show it off at the um, Showcase. And they're going to have a um, walkthrough to single-player career mode on the 13th, which is going to be a couple days later. So, that's definitely something to watch out for. And then of course they also revealed the two cover the um cover cars, the um Cadillac Racing V Series R and the Chevrolet Corvette E Ray. I'm actually looking at the um Twitter post that they put out. Now as far as stuff that um we might be seeing, um obviously maybe updates to Halo 3 Infants multiplayer, um updates to um Sea of Thieves, maybe an update to Fallout 76. Now, as far as some of the games, as far as some other games that we will be showing up, I can't really predict um, any new games, obviously. Um, if you remember, like a few months ago, Hi-Fi Rush came out of nowhere. So, we, um, I wonder if we could be seeing another drop like that, like another shadow drop, like something that Xbox and Xbox Studio is working on, but they just came out with earlier... They just come out with that time. Um, as far as other games, um, we could be seeing some gameplay footage for Avowed. Um, we could be seeing something for Fable. Maybe a trailer, maybe some gameplay footage, who knows. As far as both of those games, it's really difficult to gauge like where they're at in development. Um, if I had to guess on a... If you put a gun to my head and made me guess on a release window, I would say, honestly... Late two thousand, um, late twenty twenty four, or mid twenty twenty five. See, uh, again, it depends on like where they're at in development. Because I know Fable had a few things going on. Um, Playground Games is working on that. So, um, normally they work on the racing stuff. So it's hard to tell like where they're at with that. Another game that people want to see more of is Perfect Dark. Um, that's another one that's undergoing its development issues. Um. That's the big game that's being worked on by the initiative. And um, recently they started working with Crystal Dynamics. And Crystal Dynamics 
worked on the Avengers games, and they're working on a new Tomb Raider game. So again, that's another case of where they're of um, seeing where they're at in development. Um, but it was announced like a few years ago, so um, maybe I would say one, I would say a quarter of a chance that we could be seeing something. Maybe a new trailer, um, maybe a teaser. Um, gameplay footage, I wouldn't hold my breath. Um, another game, there's Everwild from Rare. Um, that was announced way back in 2019. So I know they've had to do a restart and go back to the um go back to the uh uh go back to the um drawing board. I don't know why I'm having a brain fart right now. But again, that's another title like we're we don't know where they're at as far as development. So um but again, it's easy to imagine us seeing something at the Xbox Game Showcase. Again, maybe a teaser, maybe a trailer. Um, as, forget, as far as gameplay footage, who knows? Um, there was Contraband. That was a game that was announced a few years ago, and um, I don't think we've seen anything about it since its announcement. So I'm thinking there's a good chance that we could be seeing something from that, too, at the showcase. Um, as it stated, K3. Um, that's the new zombie game from Underlab, State of DK3. Um, I detailed in an earlier podcast that there are some issues with the studio's management. So again, this is yet another case of us not knowing where they're going to be at in terms of development. And then there's Hellblade 2. Um, we've, see, um, we've seen gameplay footage of that recently, like several months ago. So I think we could be realistically seeing more about that. Um, matter of fact, I think we could be closing in on a release window. So if I had to guess about that, we could be seeing Hellblade um, either, if not, I don't want to say late this year, because I'll call him the like stack up thing with both Forza and Starfield. But I think we could be seeing it sometime between early to mid 2024, because I know they've been, because um, I know they they've been pressing forward and working on it a lot. Um. So what else? Now, of course, um. Of course, there are the other studios that are under the Xbox Game Studios umbrella. Oh, yeah, there's also Indiana Jones. Uh, I think that's being worked on by Machine Games. Um, that was announced back in, I think, 2020, I believe. So I, it's a good chance we could be seeing that at the showcase. Um, and it's still unknown if that's going to be a console exclusive or that's also going to be the PlayStation. Because it could be the case that they started working on it before the Bethesda acquisition. So also, in Exile is working on a shooter. Um, that's going to be a little ways out. And then I'm hearing rumors and rumblings of an upcoming game from Compulsion Studios. Um, so that, those are guys behind We Happy Few, I think. So if they're working on something, there's a good chance we might be seeing that. Um, I don't want to say if it's a good chance, because who knows. Um... But yeah, because I really can't predict on like any new stuff that will be coming out, because it could be anything. I got my own wish list for stuff that I'd like to see, but I'm gonna keep that to myself. So I guess so really, um, this is gonna be a big one for the Xbox brand. But I think as far as like some of the bigger and crazier stuff that people are thinking of, you know, um New Vegas 2, uh Killer Instinct 2, a new banjo kazooie, probably temper your expectations. That way, if they do announce that kind of stuff, um, it'll be more of a surprise to you guys. So yeah, that's what I think about the Xbox Showcase. Um, do you got any predictions? Then let me know in the comments, or feel free to reach out to me on social media. And again, I'll um, go through the... I'll tackle the leaks in a separate video. But let's move on. Alright, so I just looked up some stuff about the upcoming Metal Gear Solid Collection that's coming out. So it looks like it is indeed coming to the um, Xbox Series X and S. And um, of course it's coming to PC via Steam. So the package will include um, Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, Metal Gear Solid, including the VR missions and the special missions. It also include the Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3. Um, and these are the HD collection versions. And speaking of the HD collection, while it is backwardly compatible on the Xbox One and Series X. Um, it was originally released on the Xbox 360 and the PS3. It is backwardly compatible on the Xbox systems, but the PlayStation 3 version isn't. 
So I was wrong when it came to that. All right, so lastly, I'm going to close this out with some news about Dragon Quest. So Square Enix announced a new Dragon Quest spinoff. Infinity Strash, Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die, as it's known as, will be launching on September 28th for PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Switch, and Xbox Series X. So, yeah, it's the first Square Enix game to hit the Xbox Series X all year. So the last time there was a Square Enix game on the platform was Final Fantasy Crisis Core, which hit the console last year. So there have been several big-name releases that have, that have skipped the console, including the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters, the um, remake for Live a Live, and some other titles. But anyway, this new game, Infinity Strash, is going to be a um, action RPG with real-time combat and multiple playable characters. It's based on the anime and the manga of the same name, and in fact, the game's storyline will cover the first 41 episodes of the anime. So, of course, um, this is, while this isn't the mainline Dragon Quest game, we know about Dragon Quest XII that was, re that was announced a few years ago, and we haven't heard anything about it since. And, of course, the last mainline entry was, of course, Dragon Quest XI, and that came out some time ago. But no doubt, if you're a fan of Dragon Quest, this should tide you over. At least until we hear more about Dragon Quest XII. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up for this episode of the podcast. Thanks for joining me. Whether you're watching a YouTube video or you're listening on your preferred device, on your preferred platform. I know I kind of rambled there a little, a few, quite a few times. Um, I'm just coming at this without a script, trying to make it sound more natural. You know, kind of like I'm having a conversation about stuff rather than just reading off a script. Like I usually do. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you got your own opinions to add. Or if you got some questions or some suggestions. Then feel free to drop in the comments. Um, that's if you're on YouTube. Um, if you're on. If you're listening to the pod. If you're listening to the podcast. Then I have my link tree in the description. So you feel free to reach out to me. On whatever social media you wish. Um, I got some more stuff that I'm working on. For the channel itself. And for the podcast. So definitely stay tuned. Add me to your RSS feed, subscribe, and um, hopefully you guys have a great holiday. And until next time, I'm Audi 51000G.